Hi everyone and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to test out three new materials for making squishies with very unexpected results. If you like creating cute things, then please check out my brand new How to Draw Manga book. It contains everything you need to know about drawing in chibi style and it's available worldwide from the link below. So now let's jump into our squishy experiments. First of all, I want to make a new squishy mold that looks like an axolotl. I'm going to sculpt the body using polymer clay, and the color of course doesn't matter for this part. I've become quite a big fan of Fimo Kids because I find it softer than regular Fimo. It's much easier to work with, especially if you don't use polymer clay that often because the normal type can start to harden over time. I'm starting with a round blob and pinching one end to create a teardrop shape. Then I'm rolling out a thin snake and cutting it into small pieces. These will be the gills that stick out from the side of the axolotl's head. You can't convince me these don't look like koala ears, and I'm pretty sure that's the reason why axolotls look so adorable. I'm smoothing down the edges really well with the toothpick so these don't come off by accident during the molding process. Then I'm going to bake it for 30 minutes at 110 Celsius or 230 Fahrenheit. I'm pretty happy with how this turned out, but there are quite a lot of tiny sharp angles, so I'm a bit worried whether the mold can pick up all the details. As usual, I'm going to use the two-part silicone putty, and this is the method that I find works best for DIY mochi squishies. Mix equal parts together and then hold it in the palm of your hand like this. Push the polymer clay model sideways inside using one quick motion, and then use your other hand to compress the silicone all around it. Giving it pressure from all sides reduces the chances of air bubbles. It's also important to push the silicone upwards so it goes over the edge of the polymer clay and forms a ridge like this. Then place it on a flat surface to cure. The smooth teardrop shape was a bit tricky to demold, but it came out in the end and looks great with no air gaps inside. So the first material we want to test out is liquid silicone. I bought this from a website with the pretty amazing name Troll Factory. This is a fairly well-known shop from Germany that sells industrial supplies for mold making. They have a huge range of silicone and resin, but it's extremely technical and not specifically marketed for crafting. I simply chose the one with the softest texture, which corresponds to a Shore rating of 00. zero. The shore scale is used for measuring the softness or hardness of polymers. This came with a useful chart that shows you how each type of silicone corresponds to the texture of common household items. A shore rating is calculated by seeing how much force is required to press into the material using a blunt tipped sensor. It sounds like a very technical version of my squishy experiment videos where I simply press into it using my finger. A very interesting thing I noticed is that this material has a mixing ratio of 1 to 1 and a curing time of 60 minutes. This seems very familiar because it's identical to that of Elmer Squishy's secret solution. As you can see, you pour the same amount of both packets into a cup, mix it together and then wait for 60 minutes. If you watched my video here, then you'll also remember that the secret solution has the exact same translucent texture as these bottles of Shore 00 silicone. So I'm almost certain that this is the same thing, but let's find out later in this video. The big advantage of buying wholesale is that you get a lot more material. This set costs 60 euros, which isn't that cheap, but it contains 500 grams in each bottle. I did the calculations per gram, and this is actually less than half the cost of any squishy resin that you can get from a DIY kit. It has a slightly translucent texture and no smell. I'm going to add some glitter as well, because I'm almost certain that this won't affect the curing process. This ended up a really nice pink color, which is perfect for an axolotl. Now I'm just going to pour it into the mold and wait for it to cure. Next up, we have dental paste. This is the stuff they smear into trays when taking impressions of your teeth. Every time I'm at the dentist, I always wonder if there is some use for this in crafting. I finally got my hands on a set, and the instructions are very straightforward. It contains everything you need to mix the powder. 
The measuring cup is even calibrated with a number of spoons, so there's almost no way you can mess this up. The powder is a mixture of alginate and diatomaceous earth. Both are non-toxic, but you're not supposed to inhale this while in powder form. I'm measuring out two level spoonfuls and then adding the water. It comes together very quickly and the texture looks just like cake frosting. It also smells nicely like peppermint. I smeared some into the mold, but it was already starting to harden, so I couldn't get the material into the smaller holes. This first attempt didn't work at all. I did this again using just one spoonful and working as quickly as I can. I'm honestly pretty shocked at how fast this hardens. You only have about 10 seconds to get it inside the mold before it turns solid. So this is the texture I was thinking about when planning the video. As you can see, it has a slightly squishy consistency and I want to know if this works for a proper mochi squishy. But unfortunately, my second attempt also failed because it hardened too quickly. For my final try, I'm going to use a small spoon to really pack the material into the holes before adding the rest. This method worked and I ended up with a recognizable axolotl. It's not perfect, but I'm happy enough with this. Now I'm just going to trim off the excess material. On a side note, this squishy mixing bowl is absolutely top tier. I don't understand why this is not sold for crafting purposes, because it's so easy to mix stuff in here. I think it would be perfect for slime or homemade clays. Last but not least, we have tubeless sealant. This is a material designed for fixing holes in tubeless bicycle tires. I just randomly saw this in a bicycle shop and thought it looked like something which might work for squishies. I also love the color of this one, which is pink with tiny blue dots. From what I understand, this contains little bits of latex suspended in a water solution. It's non-toxic and non-corrosive. You don't have to mix anything here, so I'm simply going to pour this directly into the mold. I don't know how long this takes to cure or dry, so I'm going to leave it overnight. I check back the next day, and unfortunately this doesn't look like it's working at all. It's still completely liquid. I'm not sure what the mechanism is through which it can seal tires, but I don't think it's designed to solidify in such a thick layer. So I'm going to clean the mold out completely and start again. I have an idea which might work, which is to mix this with the translucent silicone. I know it's possible to add glitter glue to this kind of silicone without affecting the curing process, so maybe it's going to work with latex as well. I'm just going to add enough to give it the desired color. While mixing, this feels a little bit weird because the two materials don't seem to be combining very well. However, I'm just going to pour it into the mold and hope for the best. And now for the final results. This is the regular silicone and it cured perfectly. The glitter is suspended evenly throughout and it didn't sink to the bottom. Though when trying to demold this, I had a moment of panic thinking I have another puni gel situation from this video. It initially feels like it's completely stuck to the mold, but I managed to loosen this up in the end. This is super cute, and it somehow looks more transparent with the glitter inside compared to the pure silicone solution. I'm also tidying it up a bit with scissors. The dental paste axolotl had already been demolded, but there was an unexpected surprise the next day. As you can see, it's actually starting to dry up. The original texture felt like thick rubber, similar to the silicone mold itself. But now it's a lot harder and feels like plaster. The smaller areas have turned completely white, creating an accidental visual effect where the axolotl's head and gills are two different colors. I actually love how this looks, but it does mean that the material is definitely not squishy. Right now it feels like something made from clay or plaster, but I'm still going to continue adding the facial features. I'm going to use a mixture of acrylic paint mixed with white glue. Please note that this is still going to come off the silicone squishy quite easily, so be careful not to rub over the areas you paint on. 
The upside is that if you do make a mistake, you can easily wipe it off and start over again. This isn't possible with the dental paste, so I had to be more careful. The sealant and silicone mixture did not cure after 60 minutes, so I ended up leaving it overnight. Here it is 24 hours later, and it still doesn't look completely solid. But I'm going to demold it anyway, because I don't think this is going to get much better. It has the strangest texture though, almost spongy and marshmallow-like. It reminds me of a foamy gummy candy. Some bits are watery and sticky, and it definitely didn't pick up the full shape of the axolotl. But I'm still going to add a face and see how well it squishes. First we have the silicone. This one turned out perfect, but the texture is slightly firmer than a mochi squishy. I personally prefer a softer squish, but I'm really happy to have discovered a material that I can order in bulk. Next is the dental paste. This one is obviously not squishy at all, but it was very interesting to work with. I managed to get a short clip of me squishing it just after demolding, and as you can see, it's not that soft. It's more like a firm rubber which turns into plaster, which is pretty fascinating. Last we have the latex sealant. This one is obviously not great, but I do like the color. It looks like a very sad axolotl that's falling into pieces. But as a fun fact, did you know that axolotls can regenerate all of their body parts? They can even regrow limbs and most of their vital organs, so we don't have to feel too bad about this little guy. And here are some final observations. The blue dental paste shrunk a lot during the drying process. You can see the final one is almost 30% smaller than the pink silicone squishy. I also compared the pink one to a leftover Elmer squishy. The texture is almost identical. Along with the fact that the translucent solution, mixing ratio and curing times are all the same, I strongly suspect that this is just the same thing. I feel that adding your own glitter produces a nicer aesthetic compared to adding glitter glue, however the glue method is useful for bulking out the liquid. So I hope this video is interesting, and I learned quite a lot of new things making it. In particular, I know more about industrial grades of silicone, and I can show you guys more cost-effective alternatives for making squishies in the future. I'm Joanna, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye!